Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna get a little bit loopy. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at using a couple of bash and while into loop examples. And all three of these examples recently came up in my day to day. So I figured now would be a great time to make such a video. But keep in mind that you can use these loops for many different things. So let's go over use case number one, which would be curling a website every 100 milliseconds and getting back the status code of the response so we can see that we're getting a 200. This could be really useful to do if you're debugging or trying to create some type of deployment script, and you just wanna make sure that you're serving 200s all the time and you're not dropping any requests between each deployment. So just so we're on the same page here, let's start with the curl command without the loop first. So curl has a couple of flags that you can set. Dash S is going to be silent mode. Dash I is going to do a head request instead of a get request, which means that curl is not gonna bother even parsing the body of the response. We're just gonna get back the headers and the status code, which is uh, really nice, right? It's a little bit more efficient. We're also going to redirect all the output here to dev null. And we're also going to write out the, well, you can reach in here with curl and, and get some variables that it exposes. So one of them is the HTTP code, right? 200, 502, whatever it happens to be. We're also gonna write out a new line. And then also uh, here's the address that we're going to hit, which would be example.com. This could be your domain or whatever, right? So we execute that command and we get back the status code. If I go here and go to some address that's probably not going to exist, we'll see that we get a 404. Great, it's working. So now let's uh, put this into our loop. So all we have to do at the start of the command, and by the way, I'm using bash here. This should work if you're using Z shell. I'm not sure about fish. You might wanna open up a, a bash prompt instead, but uh, you can see if it works. So what we need to do to make, turn this into a loop is basically use the while keyword here. And the idea is going to be like while, and then the command that we wanna do. And then uh, if you're doing this on one line, you can just do do. And then what do you wanna do? Well, let's sleep for 100 milliseconds, right? We can also sleep for one second, we can sleep for half, half a second, we can sleep for 10 milliseconds, but 100 milliseconds works for me. And then finally, we just need to say that uh, we're done with our loop. So this is how you can do it on one line. We're gonna take a look at an example of doing this on multiple lines as well. But for now, let's let this rip. And we can see here that we are getting this output every 100 uh, milliseconds. Now, I don't wanna slam the example.com server, so I'm going to kill that out. But here we go, just to uh, recap the command in case you wanted to make a note here. So that is it. Uh, we can also write this a second way as well. Like for example, if we do while true, we can do and then whatever command that we want. Like in this case, let me just echo a hello and we'll sleep for, I don't know, one second or whatever and then done. And we can see here, this is doing the same exact thing as above. Now, I guess maybe in some cases, this could be more clear if you're running like, I guess multiple commands or something like that. But usually if I'm just running one command, I just do while and the command name and uh, it is all good to go. So let's go over a second example now of using a while loop. This also came up pretty recently. So if you're running uh, a Debian based operating system like Debian or Ubuntu, then there's this idea of unattended upgrades. Now I don't wanna to get too sidetracked on that, but this is a command that if you're running it for the first time, it could easily take 10 minutes or so for it to finish. And that's basically what happened uh, for me. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to monitor my list of processes for a specific unattended upgrade process and basically just see when it was done running. So what I ended up doing there was uh, with pgrep, you can run pgrep-af and then you can do unattended upgrade or whatever process that you wanna search for. So if you just run that, uh, you'll notice that uh, unattended upgrade shutdown is running. Now this is a totally different program. I mean, it's still related to unattended upgrades, but this is not the one that's like, you know, would run for 10 minutes if it had a lot of work to do. This always runs in the background, but you know, as a developer, I tend to be super lazy. And what I found myself doing was, and by the way, like all of this came down to like running a script that automated running an unattended upgrade in such a way where I couldn't just run the command and then look at its output. So long story short, what I ended up doing was like, I just did like a PS awk rep, like, you know, this move here, a very common run, right? Where you do like unattended upgrade like this. I found myself just like doing this, like every, I don't know, five seconds. And then I was like, well, what the hell am I doing? Like, why not just put that into a loop? And that's how I came up with uh, this pgrep solution here, which we're gonna loop in a second. But this was really nice because uh, it allowed me to keep this window open, like a little bit off to the side. And then I could, you know, go and watch a YouTube video. And then when I saw the output was a little bit different, like when it was done running, then uh, I knew work was done and I didn't have to keep like doing this up arrow thing. So, you know, this is one way to look for a specific process. And if you look at pgrep's help menu, uh, cause I don't really know these flags in super great detail. Uh, I think the A one is like a list full. Yeah, so basically if you don't do dash A, then you're just gonna get, I think just a process ID, right? 
And then dash F here, we can see is full, uh, uses the full process name to match. Uh, if we don't include that, then I don't think we're gonna get any output because unattended upgrade specifically doesn't match like this whole entire thing here. So that's why uh, it's a good idea to put these other two flags here in most cases. But now let's just uh, do what we did before. Let me also clear this just so it's not uh, mixing things up and also clear this one as well. There we go. Okay, so let's use the while loop that we know how to use because we just used it before, right? Just like that curl command, we can just pass in this to the while loop. Then we'll do our do, and then let's just sleep for one second here, and we're done. So in this case, we didn't get anything because, right, we need to put those flags in, right? The dash af there. And we can just see, you know, going, going, going. This is great. This is going to loop forever, basically, because it's uh, as long as this uh, program here continues to run because that's how the while loop works. But no, let me actually just do an unattended uh, upgrade here. And, we're and look at the top here. The top is going to change very soon in like two seconds or whatever. Here we go. Like I just ran this pseudo unattended upgrade and it ran, 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 and now it's about done. So the cool thing about unattended upgrade, side note, by the way, is if you do run this on like, you know, let's say a daily cron job or something, uh, it doesn't take very long to run most of the time. So in this case, it finished in a couple of seconds, but in my other case, you know, the VM I was working on, I didn't run it for, I don't know, a really, really long time, and it took forever for it to finish, like a full 10 minutes. But, you know, that's just one case of looping over uh, with pgrep here to look for a process, and uh, there we go. So now let's go over the opposite of a while loop, or I guess I shouldn't say opposite, but a different type of loop, which is the until loop. So I'm going to kill out these terminals here. There we go. And we'll take a look at a script I already prepared here, which is uh, an S3 sync script. And this script... What it does is it basically waits until an S3 bucket is ready. And then when it's eventually ready, I just sync over a whole bunch of JPEGs to a specific bucket. So this came up uh, for some client work. I've just removed some of the names here just to not leak any information, right? I don't even own this example bucket. But notice here that we are using an until loop. So very, very similar syntax to the while loop. And also, by the way, heads up, this is how you can do a multi-line uh, version of that, right? We saw how to do the while loop on one line, but we can also do a while or an until loop on multiple lines, right? Do is on its own line, done is on its own line, and then everything Thing in here, uh, the indented part here is the work that you want to do. You know, in this case, I threw it into a script because it's a little bit more than like sleeping for, you know, a second or whatever. We want to make sure that we can time out after a certain amount of time. Uh, that's basically what all this extra logic is. But as for the until loop, very, very, very similar to while. So as we saw with that pgrep example, with the while loop, it's going to continuously go while that command is successful. Now, the until loop is basically the opposite of that. So this is going to loop while this uh, command doesn't work. So that's really good for our use case here because, you know, I was using a different tool to create this S3 bucket and it's not like synchronous in the sense that like it just returns immediately when I run that command. So, and I wanted to run this script right after, but the bucket takes like, I don't know, like five or six seconds usually to be accessible. So you can use the until loop like this, like, you know, until this bucket is available, you know, uh, increment this one here or the I, you know, by one and then sleep for a second and then continue doing the loop, continue do the, doing the loop until eventually we're gonna reach the timeout value, you know, if it never succeeds. And we just exit out with a one saying that, hey, the bucket was never created. So I had the timeout set very low here for the sake of the video for three seconds, but uh, let me run this here and we'll take a look here. So we can see S3 sync, waiting, waiting, it's doing some work, there's no, nothing to echo out there. And eventually it gets to the point where, you know, it hits the break condition because the timeout of three seconds was reached. And it was like, you know, the, the bucket was never created, you know, let's abort. Uh, and that's basically how that works. Now, it's interesting because this pattern of like waiting until something is done with a timeout is a pretty common pattern. I've used this in a, a number of different places. And if you followed a lot of my other videos, I actually did create a video, I don't know if you remember this thumbnail, like about this one script I wrote called wait until. And this one was really focused on waiting until like a database is ready for a continuous in integration script. But, you know, if we take a look at this script here, let me bump that up a little bit, this script very, very similar to what we just took a look there in uh, the S3 script, right? There's our until loop. And in this case, you know, the command is dyna dynamic, so we're just evaling it. But essentially, that's like the S3 command, right? And then we have the do loop, and then we have our incrementing our, our counter here, and then we sleep. And then eventually, you know, we have a little bit more of a generic message here saying like command was never successful. So going back to the script here, you know, if I wanted to refactor this, I could technically just do like wait until, and then grab this whole command here, pop that down here, and uh, it would be the exact same thing. Although I do need to wrap that in quotes and set the timeout to be whatever, right, that three second timeout, right? And if I got rid of all that, then uh, 
This should work exactly how it did before. So let's see. Waiting, 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 waiting. Three seconds of example bucket, blah, blah, blah. Command was never successful. And also we get some additional information here too, fatal error. And I guess maybe the sync command failed because it tried to execute that after. Uh, but no biggie. In either case, like this wait until, exactly the same as the other wait until, at least from the context of uh, you know what's going on during that command. So let me just bring it back to here. There we go. So that is three examples of using wait and wait until. Um, I'm not really too sure what you're gonna use them for, but just knowing that they're available is quite helpful because you might just have some weird ad hoc problem like or you know, a solution that you want. Like for example, with that unattended upgrades, it was so cool just to drop into the command line, run that command, set it off to the side, go watch some YouTube videos, and then like let the machine do the work for me and get notified uh, when it's ready. So let me know in the comments below where you're gonna be using these loops for. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.